So as many of you know, because you've emailed me about it, I was on Fox News yesterday and I had a discussion with Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk before, and I was basically talking to him about whether we think that it's worth doing Fox News, knowing that it gets so stacked against the leftist guest, knowing that it's mostly an echo chamber of unthinking, reflexive, conservative, I hate to even call it thought there, sort of non-thought, because you might get somebody who's willing to hear another point of view, or do you just say no? And Kyle's view was any opportunity to show up and actually get your voice heard in front of people who disagree is an opportunity to change someone's mind and therefore it's worth it. So I decided to do it. I was invited. Uh, Leland Vittert was the host. Vittert, I think is his, his last name. Uh, I was opposite Philadelphia radio host Dom Giordano, of course, in an attempt to, I guess, uh, not give me the credit that could have been given to me. They called me Boston radio host opposite Dom as Philadelphia radio host, of course, implying that I guess host local radio in Boston well, and don't have a syndicated show. I, don't I know. think it's a swipe at new media. Don't Maybe you? so. They don't want to recognize our platform. They also didn't make any mention of the online platform. That's also true. The topic was the Trump Putin summit. Mostly they also said right before going on that it was going to be a four minute segment unless it went really well. The idea of having two guests on for a four minute segment is clearly what you do when you don't actually want to explore ideas in depth, which they don't. And they also said to me before going on, engage with each other, which we know what that means. It means start arguing with each other. So my strategy going in, and I'm going to play the clip for you, is I knew that as soon as I would try to explain a point, given that there were four minutes allocated for an interview with two guests, they would try to interrupt me. So my goal was stick to what I want to say. If interrupted, go back to what I want to say and see what I can do. And you will immediately realize that whenever I actually started to make a point, I would immediately be interrupted and given some kind of different question to answer. And it was a completely expected tactic. There was also the attempt made by the host to take on my views, sort of in addition to this Dom guy. So it ended up being, not surprisingly, me against the conservative guest and the host Leland Vittert. But I, I expected this stuff, right? I went in knowing that. Last thing, people pointed out that I look extraordinarily white compared to the other two. I don't know if this is done deliberately, but I've noticed that many times the leftist guest is poorly lit. And the second I walked into the studio where I, I just sit in a dark room to do this and join them via satellite, I immediately saw compared to our lighting here, which makes me look sort of like a human being, <laughs> it's, it's too white. I'm there. I don't know if it's deliberate or not, but I, this is not going to look right. And uh, not surprisingly, I didn't look orange, which is a good thing, but I de definitely looked uh, like a vampire. So let's get into the first part of this interview on Fox News. And let's talk about this with Dom Giordano, David Pakman, radio hosts in their respective cities, Philadelphia and Boston as they are. Gentlemen, <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, Dom, what's striking is when you listen to the president's advisors, whether it be John Huntsman, uh, National Security Advisor Bolton, or others, they are far harsher in their rhetoric than the president. What do you make of it? That's true, Leland, and uh, I wish the president were harsher in this, but the actions of President Trump, what his administration is actually doing, we put more sanctions on Putin, we've kicked out more of the uh, delegates from the Soviet, from, from Russia, so his actions have been firm in this manner, and I think it's way overblown that he's going to give away the store. President Trump is not going to do that in any kind of negotiation. I wish the rhetoric, though, were more direct toward Putin. That's where I usually am. David, it brings up an interesting point. Is the left's problem with President Trump among many that they have uh, the way he goes about foreign policy or actually the substance of it? Because as uh, David points out, or Dom points out, he's been uh, pretty tough on Putin, much tougher than Obama in many ways, by selling lethal weapons to the Ukrainians. Yeah, I think that the problem really is the easily manipulable uh, reality of Donald Trump. And I think if we want a, sort of a preview of what we could expect with Putin, we look at what happened with Kim Jong-un, where Donald Trump claimed victory on the basis of the exact same vague promises that we'd gotten from North Korea before, tweeted on the way back that the nuclear threat is over, and we just learned that but last hold week on, Kim Jong-un bailed on. 
in that vein, the president just tweeted even this morning. He said, wait I, a second. He said, it's been nine months. There hasn't been a nuclear test and there hasn't been a missile test. So there's the first interruption. And now all of a sudden it's not David and Dom. It's Dom and Leland against David. And I tried to just stick with it. So when they came back to me, I just continued the same point I was trying to make. And of course, there were continuing efforts made to derail. Why shouldn't he get credit mm -hmm. for that? The, as I was saying, just days after the supposed victory in opening the door of new relations, Kim Jong-un went to a potato farm instead of meeting with Trump's Secretary of State, showing <laughs> that there was really nothing there. So my, what I'm anticipating from this summit with Putin would be that Donald Trump will be incredibly impressed with Putin's sense of humor, much like he was with Kim Jong-un's, he's a great guy, so on and so forth. I would be worried, especially after the NATO summit just days ago, where Trump started hinting at maybe we go this thing our own way that plays right into what Putin wants so I wouldn't be surprised if that gets pushed along a little bit of a way as well Dom fair, fair critique and something to be worried about no uh, David <laughs> I, I don't think that's the case again again with Kim Jong-un he is not testing missiles again he's not getting to that final step where he's able to hit it that's what's important not all the posturing do I wish President Trump were more buttoned up and sound it as say a John Bolton might Yes, I do when it comes to Putin. So now they both latch on to this talking point. Hey, Kim Jong-un hasn't tested a missile in nine months. Dom does it and the host does it. And eventually I just asked them to tell me, why is that something that Trump gets credit for? And I admit, I actually kind of bungled it. I, I think I did not handle this part as well. I, I was not as articulate as I wanted to be. That's his style. Dumb, you dumb, guys, real, David, real I think don't you. like his style. You don't like his style, but the results are there. There are certainly no results to speak of yet. Well, well, hold on, David. Is that, is that really fair? You got nine months without a nuclear weapons test. You got nine months without exactly. a, a missile test. There's, there's a new report that there's actually an advancement in the nuclear research capabilities in North okay, Korea. There, there, and, and I want to be super of... clear because I think that there's going to be allegations here that I am unwilling to see progress. I actually was hoping for a real victory. I've been following the North Korea crisis for more than 10 years on my program. So I was, I, I am committed actually. I believe it's one of the main humanitarian crises that we need to well, be focusing on around the David, world. David, David, I just haven't David, seen hold progress. Let me, get a, let me get a question. In, in reality <laughs> though, President Trump was able to get a nine month moratorium on nuclear weapons testing and on missile testing. This from a regime that President Obama said was the single greatest threat to the United States when he met with President Trump. How is that not an accomplishment in and of itself, regardless of the other issues? If all of a sudden the focus is who in the past said that someone is a geopolitical no, David, just, threat, just, David, just answer the then question. we've got to go back how, to David, the drawing David, board because that's exactly David, what the entire David, Republican Party David, said about just, Vladimir David, Putin just for answer years. The question. Just answer the question. How is no missile testing and no nuclear weapons testing in nine months not an accomplishment? Explain what Trump did to call it an accomplishment. Okay, Dom, I, David, I, I, Dom I'm trying to figure out what that means. Yeah, if you I, do, I, get, knock yourself out. I, I, yeah, I don't. I so don't. they pretend not to know what I'm asking. And I think it was pretty clear what I was asking, but yet I should have asked it, I think, in a better way. Like, for example, um, France also hasn't bombed Italy for the last nine months. Does Trump get credit for that or something something along those lines? I think it was OK, yeah. but still, they, they, of course, had no answer to that. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, I yeah. guess, but I think you still illustrated the point. And I think they were both stumped there. They just wanted to make it seem as if you were the one who was asking a crazy question. They just can't understand what crazy things I'm saying. Um, OK, and then it just goes sort of downhill from there. Here's the rest of the interview. It comes back to, again, it is an accomplishment, and I'll be bipartisan. It was President Bush, President Clinton, all American presidents couldn't break through and even meet with this guy and talk with him. He was approaching the final steps to be able to hit us. He is not Absolute at that point lie. now. There's no American. That's, that's the truth. He mm -hmm. is not. He is standing down the from idea that. that so no even though other, I no, would no, rather no. see is, a harsher line. This is an echo chamber talking point that Trump was able to achieve something by securing a meeting. North Korean leaders have been desperate to get the recognition it, it, they David, would have David, gotten by getting by in front of former presidents, and it was it, the president wait, on, who fellas, refused let's, the meeting. Let's move on it for, was his tactics. It was the Trump tactics that got the meeting, and who knows, maybe woke up Kim Jong Un to no the reality of, of this versus other American presidents. All right, we'll move on real no quickly. No evidence of that. Move on real quickly to the president's interview with uh, CBS this morning uh, that aired. 
about the hacking of emails by the Russian government. Take a listen to what the president said. I think the DNC should be ashamed of themselves for allowing themselves to be hacked. They had bad defenses <laughs> and they were able to be hacked. But I heard they were trying to hack the Republicans, too. But and this may be wrong, but they had much stronger defenses. David, is it a fair critique that uh, for as much as the Democrats cry and scream about Russian uh, collusion and or Russian intervention in the election, it was Democrats who were in charge of the national security apparatus when it happened? The, the idea here that if you are a victim of hacking, it's the fault of the victim when you don't want to blame that, he, that party who did the hacking is absolutely hilarious. And anybody who doesn't see the absurdity of that on its face, it, it's going to be very hard to actually engage on the facts when it comes to that. And what, what the, the real big news related to this is that we now know that when Donald Trump, quote, jokingly said, hey, if Russia wants to hack Hillary's emails, that wouldn't be a bad thing. The first attempt mm. to do that happened within hours of that statement. That's really the news. Dom? And Leela and I would counter that we do know from the Rosenstein report on Friday, the big news is no American right. citizen committed any act of collusion or crime, and there's no evidence the Russians were effective. I don't like what the Russians did either, but they weren't effective, and you've got to knock off yeah. this witch hunt. Hard, hard to hold understand. On a second. Wait, wait a second, guys. Hold on, hold on a second. Wait, wait a second. A, a witch hunt that finds 32 witches already is not exactly a witch hunt. Well, and, and, and number two, when you say no American citizens have been accused of crimes, Paul Manafort, I think, is American. I, I know a lot uh, of wait, Americans I, I, are embarrassed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Michael Flynn is not Flynn accused is of the crime of colluding with the Russians. He's not accused of that. Collusion is not a crime. A that's, a, that's a farce. Fellas, that's a farce. You've got to stop burning we witches appreciate here. It. Collusions you got to stop much. burning witches. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Obviously, a spirited discussion went on a little bit longer than we thought it would, which is a good thing. We'll see you guys soon. Yeah, so I was immediately flooded with insane hate mail on Facebook, Twitter, email, even Instagram. A few samples. Uh, John wrote in saying, I just decided to take a Google search on you. And wow, what a waste. The usual arrogant, condescending idiot, probably successful in your target market. Have a nice life. Frank wrote in, how does this tool even have a radio show? Is your studio located on Newberry Street? Thank God for Howie Carr. Uh, Ron, I don't know what that, uh, bottom line, I think that's an, ex that, that is my typo there. Ron wrote in, if you intended to embarrass yourself on Fox News, you did. Joe, after eight years of vacillation and cowardice by Obama and Clinton incorporated your nonsensical hysteria over your mythical Trump ski is laughable. You are just another mindless pole smoker. Hiding out in the wannabe totalitarian one-party city state of Boston, you are yet another useless faux liberal air thief who has never had a real job. We have a couple others. Pat wrote in, not this Pat, no one likes a smug, evasive, liberal dumbass. And lastly, Mike, saw you on Fox News today. How in the hell do you keep a show? You are a brain dead moron. You have been following North Korea. Really? What does that mean? Thank God for you. There is low life trash Democrats that follow your show. You are a joke. What a clown stay in Boston. Great place for you. Millions of us are grateful for all the amazing work our president has done. Sorry, piece of garbage. Hillary did not win. But thank God for our country. We have a real man for president, not a pathetic joke like you. So my question is, is it worth doing this? Is it worth doing this or is it just a total waste of time? That's my question to you and I look forward to hearing from you about it. One of today's David Pakman Show sponsors is World CryptoCon. It's a three day event at the Aria Resort in Las Vegas from October 31st to November 2nd. This year's theme of World CryptoCon is achieving mass adoption of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology specifically through small, medium and enterprise business innovation. You can join over 5000 attendees. Check out the 150 plus exhibitions stretched out over 200,000 square feet of meeting space. Enjoy a full schedule of speakers, including many of the biggest names in the blockchain world. And the David Pakman Show audience can get a $300 discount on tickets by using promo code Pakman at worldcryptocon.com. I've put a link in the description under the video. Once again, that is promo code P-A-K-M-A-N at worldcryptocon.com.